the Wild Poor Puppy Podcast episode. This podcast is sponsored by EnviroWorks. We away the probiotic pet-friendly way to keep your home clean. Visit weaway.co.uk. Part 2. House training with your puppy. From the number of emails, phone calls and letters that I get from clients, I know that the biggest problem with a new puppy is that of house training. House training your puppy is absolutely essential for you to have a happy and long-term relationship with your dog as a pet. But it's a very persistent problem once it develops. If you have a new puppy, it's really important to have a house training routine for them. Make sure that you establish a really, really ingrained habit. I know it's time consuming, but it's worth it for a new puppy to get into an absolute routine. Regularly, puppies will need to go to the toilet and it's important that we teach them that it's not acceptable to toilet indoors. Puppies aren't always born knowing what is indoors and what is outdoors. If you're lucky, they tend to understand that they don't toilet in their own bed, but what they might actually do is go across the room and toilet at the other side of the room. Often I get complaints that puppies will toilet on rugs or mats by the door. It may be that they tried to go out but couldn't get through, or it may be that they just preferred the softer surface that was underneath their feet. It's very, very important that you keep a regular check on your puppy's movements when they're small. Now, that's just not for toileting, that's for other things as well. You can prevent all sorts of problems, chewing and destruction, or learning the other bad habits that seem to go along with everyday life for a dog. So do try and keep a diary. It doesn't have to be an actual diary. It could be a mental diary when you know when your puppy is likely to need the toilet and there are certain signals that you need to look out for. Firstly, you know that puppies are most likely to need the toilet immediately after waking. Now this can be up to a minute to up to five minutes after if they do need to go, but you need to set yourself up for success. If you're going to get the opportunity to catch your puppy in the act, take them outside or preferably take them outside before they start to toilet and then reward them well, then they are going to remember that experience as a good one and they are going to seek out that same experience again. So as soon as your puppy wakes up, they need to go straight out to their toilet area. It might help you to know that puppies will generally learn to toilet in one area of the garden if you keep taking them to that same area and if you always reward them in that place. If, of course, you leave them to their own devices, they will toilet anywhere. So first of all, as soon as your puppy is woken up, that's when they probably need the toilet. And be patient you might need to stand there for a few minutes and this isn't always great when it's dark and cold. But remember, it's not great for your puppy either, so it might help them to have you there while they're very young. Secondly, puppies quite often need the toilet straight after eating or drinking. So again, take the puppy out to their special toilet area as soon as they've finished and be patient. You could also take them out after playing and after other things such as excitement or visitors coming, that kind of thing. All of these things are likely to get your puppy started on needing the toilet and you need to predict when they're going to go so that they can actually go on demand or on your command anyway. Now, what I'm trying to get across is that puppies will best of all go to the toilet when there is a reward in the offing. So don't just take them out there and sort of pat them on the head when they perform and tell them what a good dog they are and hope that that's enough. Dogs tend to be a little bit more materialistic than that. You know, yes, they like you, but you probably tell them that they're nice dogs a lot of the time and give them a lot of fuss probably most of the day, particularly with a very cute, fluffy little pup. So make sure that you have something to take with you outside so that you can really reward them. This isn't going to be something that was going to be rewarded with a, you know, a doggy chocolate drop. You need to have really high octane treats, something like chicken or cheese or ham, It doesn't have to be a very large piece and we don't want to upset the puppy's tummy but we do want to make it quite heavily scented so that the puppy associates the delicious food with what they've just done. Puppies will then start to think that humans are pushovers. How easy it is to get a human to produce some food. All they need to do is go outside and go to the toilet. 
When you want to add a command to this, some people say hurry up, or they say busy, or be quick. Something that's suitable and something that you don't mind calling out in the middle of the park in front of a lot of people. Uh, do bear in mind other people will walk your dog as well. So try and think of something that's actually quite socially acceptable. What you can then do is as your puppy goes to the toilet, the second they start to go, you give your command. So you could say, hurry up, as soon as they go, and then immediately reward them. Of course, if you produce a food reward very quickly, you may distract the puppy uh, mid-performance, shall we say. So it might be worth just waiting a little bit until they've actually more or less completed before you give them their treat. Don't be worried if your puppy doesn't need the toilet. The key to successful house training is confinement or supervision. If your puppy doesn't need the toilet, bring them back in by all means, but you need to watch them carefully for the signs that they might actually need to go to the toilet and quickly take them back outside so that you can reward them. Signs that you should be looking for are sniffing the ground, circling. It tends to look a little bit frantic, but it might be that the puppy just stops and concentrates for a second. If you spot that happening, you must quickly tell your puppy to go outside and if you have to, put a little lead on them so you can draw them outside quickly so that they can go in the right place. Puppies aren't naughty when they go into the toilet in the house. They're not doing it on purpose to annoy you or to make a mess of your floor. They are young creatures. With human babies, it's a lot easier. You know, they're in nappies and we don't really need to worry about it until they're quite a bit older. With puppies, don't expect too much. You are there to help them learn. And if you don't teach them, there isn't anyone else there to help. So give yourself that responsibility rather than that of the puppy. The puppy can't tell house rules. And to be fair, they're learning an awful lot all at once. So you need to give them guidance. I'm often asked what to do if the puppy goes to the toilet in the wrong place. Now that's an interesting question. If they've already been to the toilet and you find it, what you do not do is tell the puppy off. It's too late, they won't associate it, and it's downright nasty, especially the old habits that used to go along with this kind of training. I don't want to go into those now, but really they are quite cruel. I'm not a softie in some ways, but I am when it comes to young puppies. They are not trying to be horrible to you, so you do not that does not give you the right to punish them for something. If you found a puddle or a mess, that's your fault. You should have supervised your puppy or given them less space to run around in. And it, that all they needed to do was go to the toilet. You weren't there to show them where to go. So take the responsibility of that on your own shoulders. It might be that your puppy suddenly needs to go to the toilet and you spot them just as they're about to go. At this point, it's really important that you give them a little bit of a startle to make them stop doing what they're doing, but quickly follow it up with what you do want them to do. So you might want to clap your hands or quickly say outside so that the puppy thinks, what? <laughs> and looks up at you, stops doing what they're doing and quickly goes outside. Even if they haven't quite finished, they might have uh, a little bit left to go. Or you could stand out there and at least you've started to complete the pattern. It's also really important that you always take the same route through the house. And if you, if you can, try not to carry your puppy. Your puppy needs to do the walk. They need to learn the route. And if they won't walk with you, leave a little house line attached to their collar, which is a light two metre line you can buy from most pet shops or a little piece of string or washing line. Be careful they don't eat it. But you can then quickly get hold of the puppy without having to chase them around and scoot them out the door and give them a reward when they're outside. To clean up mess from puppies, when they're very young, you can actually use just normal toilet roll and a bit of um, pu like pet disinfectant. If you use something that has bleach in it, then the ammonia smell of the bleach is said to smell rather like the urine smell in the first place. So it may actually not deter your puppy from going again in that same spot. It might actually increase the scent. Puppy pads are available, which are sort of pre-impregnated with a little bit of this, this scent. And they're quite soft and they're very absorbent. And the idea for the puppy is to attract them to that area. But you will still need to teach them to go on a puppy pad. Even newspaper is not an automatic surface for a puppy to toilet on. It's probably worth asking your breeder before you actually bring the puppy away what kind of house training routine they have put in place. 
Breeders really should be doing this from the minute the puppies start to leave the nest to toilet. And it can be quite hard if you've got a lot of puppies, but a responsible breeder realises that dogs can easily be rehomed for house training problems. They are big problems sometimes, so they want to make sure their puppies have a successful home with you. So ask them details. Are they using puppy pads? Are they using newspaper? What sort of routine do they have? This will also reflect on the feeding routine of the puppy because clearly what goes in is going to have to come out at some point. It does take puppies rather longer to digest food than it does humans, but you do need to be aware that, you know, if they've had a big drink, then there's likely to need the toilet soon. So try and set up a routine. Be very aware of what's going on. Supervise your puppy well. And if you can't supervise your puppy, that's when you need to develop some kind of confinement. Now, confinement can be a lead on the puppy so that you can hold the lead or attach it to your belt. Be careful not to tread on the puppy, but that means you're keeping the puppy around your feet. You might want to shut them in one room. As long as you're in the room or as long as the room isn't too big, you'll probably be successful. Often people leave their puppy in the kitchen or even they leave them in the utility room. When you have your space for the puppy, you will learn that the puppy will prefer to go to the toilet in a certain area. With young puppies, they can just go anywhere, but you might find a particular pattern developing. And trust me, it's easier to teach them to go outside than to teach them to go in the house and then try and transfer it outside after that. Get your puppy a small puppy pen or a crate, somewhere where you can contain them in quite a small space. As I said at the start, sometimes puppies will not go in their own bed and in fact instinctively they don't want to go to the toilet in their own bed. If they are starting to do that, firstly you should contact your vet to make sure that there isn't anything wrong with your puppy. And secondly, you should wonder what exactly the breeder was teaching the puppies. Were they shut up for long periods of time for example? Once you have a small crate or a pen, you need to teach the puppy to enjoy going in there. And if you bring puppy home from day one and introduce this, it will be a lot easier than if you try and introduce it later. A handout on crate training is available from my website at www.intellidogs.com. So if you want to start crate training your puppy, please take a look there because crate training can be an extremely useful skill for you and for your puppy. And they are not the cruel things that they are made out to be. They are little dens for your puppy where your puppy can retreat to when they need a bit of peace and quiet. But you can also confine them in there when you can't keep an eye on them and that really helps with house training. My own dogs still sleep in their crates and they really love them. When we have a lot of visitors around, that's where they go by choice. So what we've got to look at now is the actual routine itself. We've talked about the signs that your puppy might need the toilet and we've talked about the areas they might need to go. We've talked about supervision and we've talked about confinement. So for example, you can't keep an eye on your puppy and your puppy's probably quite sleepy. So you pop them in their little playpen or their crate uh, with a chewy toy. A nice tasty chewy toy, by the way, not something just made of rubber that doesn't really smell very interesting. Then you need to make sure that you're letting your puppy out at regular intervals so that they can go to the toilet. So don't confine them for hours on end and expect them to hold it. That's going to be very difficult for a young puppy. Young puppies can't even hold their bladders overnight, so you might be up for a 3am wake-up call at some point. Get your puppy out, take them straight to their toilet area and wait, like I said before, for them to go to the toilet so that you can reward them. You might even want to get a special pot of treats that you leave near that area, perhaps hanging up on a fence or a post, so that your puppy can dash out, spot the treat pot and think, how do I work out how to get those treats out of there? Oh yeah, I remember, this is all I have to do. Regular intervals means that when your puppy performs, they go to the toilet in the right place or in the wrong place if you were too late. You need to reward them for going in the right place, ignore the mistakes if they make them. But then you know that your puppy isn't likely to need the toilet again for a little while. That's when you can bring them in and give them plenty of freedom with you and play and little bits of free time. They may then want to drink or get a little bit tired. It might be time for another visit out to the toilet area and so on. You may need to keep this going for several weeks and sometimes months. Some dogs are more difficult to house train than others and this really depends 
on what they get as an experience from their mum, what an experience they get from their breeder and their early experience with you. Try, try, try not to let your puppy make mistakes with house training because it can become a well ingrained bad habit if you are not careful. If you have any further questions about this topic and would like to contact me, my name is Karen Wilde and my website is www.karenwilde.co.uk.